Tag 24. Ich bin dein Mensch, wieder und wieder vorgeschlagen von Sebastian, auch bekannt als I am the Sword und schließlich mit 16 Likes gewählt. Um ehrlich zu sein, mein Traummann würde sehr ähnlich aussehen. For as long as there has been the idea of humanoid robots, there have been people who wanted to fuck them. Actually, drop the adjective. And the noun. Doesn't matter what it is, someone wants to have sex with it. But there has long been a fascination with the prospect of sexually active androids. Movies have tackled the subject since at least the 70s, and with each passing year, the idea feels only more plausible. Now, I think it'll be quite some time before a real doll can be a real man, but Honestly, the most explicit form of intimacy is also the least philosophically interesting. As the internet will no doubt show you, it is entirely possible to have sex with the exterior of a Walmart. Whether you should or not could make for like a solid TikTok, but it's not going to sustain a feature. Which is why sex bot narratives tend to focus on intimacy in a larger sense. Her is about forming a bond with a literal voice in your head. You can't see or feel this person but you can hear them. Is that enough for you? Are you enough for them? Ex Machina looks at the next stage of the Turing test. We know that Ava is a robot. We can literally see through her. Then what? Even if we know that the emotions are synthetic, does that make them feel less real? What makes an emotion real? Why do creatives get so offended at the prospect of a creative AI? Is it because we believe that maybe we aren't actually special and that we can, in fact, be replaced? I'm Your Man is like Ex Machina by way of her, but not depressing. Set in nowadays Berlin, we follow Dr. Alma Felser, a historian who has been selected to test drive an AI life partner, Tom, played with the utmost precision by Dan Stevens, who knows German. It's wild when a performer pulls out some shit you just had no idea they were capable of, and seeing the guy from The Guest, and also, I guess, Downton Abbey or whatever, just like fluently speak German for an entire movie was, was wild. <laughs> Anyways, Alma is tasked with spending three weeks with this man, after which she will give her recommendations to an ethics committee about whether she believes that these machines should be given rights in our society and whether humans should be able to take them as life partners, to reject each other entirely and live in bubbles with the perfect partner, built to our desires and run by algorithms that truly will learn our every want. And if they trip up, well, correct the behavior, and it will actually never happen again. Tom is perfect. He can dance. He can immediately catch and care for a woman who faints. He can tell Alma that another researcher half the world away beat her to publication on the ultra-specific subject she has been researching for three years. He can do everything, except relate to her struggles. He doesn't understand why she's upset when she finds out that her years of work have been for nothing, or why she took the loss of a relationship so hard. Those things are egotistical and pathetic, he says. But in that matter-of-fact way that you would definitely hate from a human, but almost accept from a robot? But that's not really the problem. In fact, there is no problem per se. While there are quirks in development and the implication that things can go wrong, this isn't a situation where Alma has to be worried that Tom is dangerous or is secretly using her for some nefarious purpose. He has no ulterior motive. He was designed to be her perfect partner, and that's all he wants to do. And that means the film is here for a very different philosophical conversation than most of its peers. One of the problems with app-based dating, and I say this as someone who's nearly five years into a relationship with someone I met on Tinder, is the fact that you are constantly aware of how many people you're not currently on a date with who you could potentially be on a date with. So you begin to fixate on the flaws of the person you're with. You look for reasons why it shouldn't work out, because this person is not perfect, because no one's perfect. But, but what if the actual perfect partner does exist? What if they're just right there waiting to be swiped on? Or maybe they're already in your messages. Maybe you have a date with them already scheduled for tomorrow. So why should you put the slightest effort into this dinner you're having right now? 
there's no incentive to see past the most superficial first impression, let alone compromise on anything. Now imagine knowing that there is literally a perfect partner available for purchase or whatever. How could any human ever measure up to something like that? And how could a person ever content themselves with less? When movies warn us about the death of humanity at the hands of AI, they are talking about a machine uprising, some Terminator shit. But I'm Your Man makes the case that it needn't be so violent. Within one generation of Tom's mass production, humanity ends. Not by force, but by choice. Is this movie actually really fucking depressing? <laughs> Jesus Christ, uh, 8.4 out of 10. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you particularly to my patrons, my mom, Hammer and Marco, Kat Terracotta, Benjamin Schiff, Anthony Cole, Elliot Fowler, Greg Lucina, Kojo, Phil Bates, Willow, I Am the Sword, Riley Zimmerman, Claire Bear, Taylor Lindis, Andrew Madison Design, and the folks who'd rather be read than said. If you like this video, that's great. If not, oh well. If you want to see more, i uh, got a few more days to recommend what I'm going to do. Almost over. Almost over. Tschüss.